Hello everyone, myself Dr. Aishri Srivastav. So uh, when we talk about PG after MBBS, most people think about the clinical branches like medicine, radiology, dharma. So and not about the pre and paraclinical branches or less about the pre and paraclinical branches. So what's the future like with the pre and paraclinical branches? What are the pros and cons and who should actually go for such branches? Uh, today I want to talk about the not so talked about branches and let's get some clarity on each one of them. So uh, I, I would be taking all of them uh, on each one of them but today I would want to start uh, with MD or MS Anatomy of course I would like to start from the first year itself. So first who should actually choose these branches? So my first and the most important point uh, would be uh, somebody who has a passion towards teaching, somebody who has a certain degree of inclination towards teaching uh, because uh, if you are a certain someone who has enjoyed teaching their siblings during your school years or uh, you are a person who likes concept building and detailing concept and uh, you know explaining concepts in detail uh, and you've done that during your undergrad years maybe uh, to your juniors so you might want to explore that side of yourself uh, so this this can be one of the options for you. Second would be if you have interest in the structural and scientific side of medicine, right? If you have that sort of interest, uh, you can definitely go for this branch. Third, and uh, I think uh, one of the most important points, this can also be because uh, teaching as a career demands a lot of patience. So if you're a person uh, who is patient, who's detail oriented and have curiosity about how a human body is built. So this one can be for you. Fourth, uh, obviously, and the most basic is if you want a stable academic nine to five job rather than a high pressure adrenaline rush wala career so uh, if you are a person who has a long-term goal of that that you want stability you want a you know uh, as a stable ground aapko, you do not want those ups and downs those adrenaline rushes and you know those stress and everything uh, so that this can be one of the branches for that uh, for sure so coming to the pros in this branch the first and the most important point and the most underrated i think point uh, amongst uh, all other you know benefits that that uh, the pre and paraclinical branch holds is a uh, great work life balance you know uh, kabhi kabhi jab hum ye uh, cheez bolte hai, it's like ha ha matlab ye to understood hai ki ha isme work life balance acha hoga ye wo but we do not give that uh, you know benefit as much weightage as it deserves because uh, you know 5 to 10 years down the line i think this is one of uh, the most important things that everybody uh, like us would crave for uh, because who wouldn't want a personal life right so uh, this is one of the branches uh, that will give you that it will give you great work life balance second it has less competition of course you will not have as much difficulty in establishing yourself uh, as compared to uh, you know one with the clinical branches uh, so of course there's less competition and you will not run out of jobs people who are saying that there is a lot of saturation in all the fields uh, be it non-clinical or clinical i do not think so uh, and what i have researched about uh, you know such branches uh, and that is what i've come across so uh, there is less competition in this field because obviously less candidates are taking up such branches and uh, you know there is so much more vacancies in all the medical colleges out there um, in such uh, in the faculty uh, in all the medical uh, so uh, there is less competition in this field because obviously less candidates are taking such branches uh, less candidates are inclined uh, you know uh, towards these uh, clinical and uh, towards these non-clinical branches so obviously there is less competition so one uh, great factor is that you are not you will not run out of jobs you know it's not that that uh, after your md you will be like running for your job and you know there'll be a lot of competition and you, you'll have that uh, extra stress to look forward to it's not like that there's high number of vacancies out there across the country in the medical colleges so uh, that is one good factor because uh, these uh, branches will always be in demand because of the lack of number of candidates present out there second there'll be no uh, you know there are no emergencies if you are a sensitive individual if you think that you cannot handle high pressure or maybe mortalities um, you know, so if you are that sort of a sensitive individual so i think this one uh, is a you know it's far away from those things aapko wo extra stress wo extra sensitivity wo extra you know guilt ke through nahi guzarna padta hai which you know there's always a price to pay for everything so i'm not saying that all the clinicians out there are uh, experiencing mortalities or something like that but i'm just saying that you always risk uh, you know getting into that part also if you choose a clinical field so you know that is the price they pay for uh, the kind of branch they take uh, so that is one thing uh, agar aap sensitive ho aur aapko lagta hai ki aap ye sari cheeze handle nahi kar sakte in life uh, so uh, you know this is one branch which has no emergencies no mortality whatsoever third uh, 
early financial stability like you can start earning steadily right after your md uh, you know uh, uh, once you've completed your post graduation you can join um, any uh, any uh, medical college and they pay you decently enough uh, we at uh, um, the government medical colleges or the private ones so you have uh, you get the feeling of early financial stability as compared to a clinical uh, uh, branch so that is one thing because in clinical branches once they've completed their pg uh, they want to go for the super specialization or something like that so they always want to upskill themselves so that is the kind of struggle they go through uh, but uh, you know you will have the um, satisfaction of early financial stability although the uh, financial growth is not as much as a clinician so that is one con also that i've added here itself that your you know um, your income at a point will come to a hold uh, but that is not necessarily the case with the clinicians of course uh, so that is one con there that i want to mention right here third i would say that uh, you know there are various research opportunities available um, uh, uh, post uh, doing uh, post graduation in this branch because you know there can be a little bit of career shift also if you're interested if you're not entirely interested in teaching and you want to also do something else um, so th that can be uh, there are various research opportunities available out there like for example on cadaveric studies or uh, the uh, in embryology uh, uh, you can have research on various IVF techniques and also uh, in, in the branch of genetics. So there are various, uh, you know, central institutes in which uh, which provide such research op opportunities. Both you can be a clinical geneticist or you can go into the IVF field. Uh, but always remember here also I would like to add a con to it that obviously, it, obviously you can uh, go for, uh, you know, such research fields. But uh, when it comes to uh, the central institutes, of course, the uh, people who have uh, done their post-graduation in the clinical field will have a higher chance of getting into uh, such, uh, you know, fields, IVF techniques and everything rather than, you know, as compared to you because you've done from the anatomy, maybe somebody who's done from obstetrics and gynecology, that person will have a higher chance of getting uh, that research opportunity as compared to you. So that is also the, uh, that is one con that obviously there is a discrepancy out there. So yeah, I mean, um, and then as an MBBS, of course, you can uh, always uh, practice and you can always uh, have your own clinic or something like that. And you can also do various fellowships, fellowship programs and upskill yourself and you can uh, practice uh, like during your evening hours. Uh, so now coming to the cons uh, of this branch. So my first pointer would be, uh, and the most important pointer that you will not have the satisfaction of direct patient interaction and their treatment. You will never get the satisfaction of, you know, healing patients directly unless and until you practice as an MBBS, of course. Uh, so, uh, you know, you when it comes to the core of this job which is teaching so of course that is something you're left out of uh, so that is one and uh, that is the first and the most important point because you know when we enter into MBBS and when we you know during our school days or something like that when we uh, dream of becoming a doctor that is something we you know imagine ourselves to be like uh, being in a hospital setup and treating patients you know nobody gets into MBBS thinking uh, that you know they'll teach at least that's what I think like most of us do not get into MBBS thinking that they'll just teach so that is one thing that you're left out of you do not uh, have like the best opportunities of uh, uh, treating patients so that is one thing. So uh, second point would be slower financial growth initially. I mean, you may get the satisfaction of, uh, uh, you know, early financial stability, uh, but the financial growth itself is really slow as compared to the clinical branches uh, because you start off as SR. Uh, and if I take Delhi as a, as a standard, so you start off with a salary of about 1.2 to 1.5 lakhs, uh, then you get promoted to uh, AP uh, in which you earn about 1.5 to 1.8 lakhs. Then uh, you are. It takes another four years to uh, get into the position of associate professor, which uh, which will be around you know uh, 1.8 to 2 lakhs, and then uh, another three years to uh, get uh, to uh, the to get to be a professor, uh, which has about uh, like 2.5 to 2.8 lakhs. So. Um, so that is the uh, salary range and uh, that is the amount of time that it takes uh, to get to a position of professor and right, to be able to earn that much. Uh, so yeah, financial growth is comparatively much slow. Uh, so that is one con. Third, you have, uh, although there are a lot of vacancies out there in the medical colleges, they want, uh, you know, uh, the paraclinical and preclinical faculties, but you're still dependent on the medical colleges, right? Like, for example, for a clinician, they can always, you know, work. In, there are hospitals out there in every city, right? So they can always uh, work there or they can have their independent setup. But that is not the case with you. You will always be dependent on medical colleges and not every city out there has a medical college so you know in terms of that uh, you know you have limited job opportunities so I'm not contradicting my point of the pros of course if there is a medical college there are job opportunities but there has to be a medical college right so uh, and not every city out there has a medical college but that problem is I think that problem will get solved in uh, uh, you know in the coming 10 years with the you know mushrooming of so many medical colleges in like every city almost every city out there so yeah so that is one uh, con uh, currently uh, then I would like to say is that uh, you know, you'll always be uh, 
you know overloaded with a lot of paperwork and a lot, lot of documentation a lot of you know clerical work during your pg uh, during those three years like uh, there is a lot of paperwork that you have to do and that is one thing that really frustrates the students and I, I, i'm in that uh, you know uh, as long as i have you know researched about it and uh, you know uh, well, i have got to know that there's a lot of you know paperwork that has to be done a lot of filing and everything so that is one thing that really is frustrating when it comes to pg and i hope uh, that improves with the coming years because uh, that is what that is not what uh, uh, you know pg residents are there for they're there to teach and to learn and to you know grow and not do all the filing work and everything so we sh uh, so i think that overwork should not be there but it is there unfortunately so that is one con of course so that's about it i th think i gave you a little bit of clarity on the topic so uh, I, i would just want to conclude it by saying that uh, md or ms anatomy may not be the flashiest branch uh, but it's a foundation building intellectually satisfying and balanced career option so uh, so uh, you know the, if that is something you crave for uh, it is a great option for you but if you crave patient interaction quick financial growth or high clinical uh, adrenaline this may not align with your long term goals uh, so that is one thing that you should uh, always you know take care of uh, that what do you actually aspire for uh, at in long term in your life so in the end every branch has its own pros and cons right but anatomy is where i i believe anatomy me is where medicine truly begins So if you found this video helpful do not forget to like and subscribe and also share it with someone who you think is currently confused about taking it up as a PG branch thank you so much i'll see you in my next video bye